بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد continuing on in our treaties عقيدة واسطية شيخ الإسلام by شيخ الإسلام ابن تيمية رحمه الله تعالى رحمة واسعة and we ask Allah the Almighty to bless us with علم نافع ورزق طيبة وعمل متقبل and bless us with a correct understanding of this important subject which is the study of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine names and attributes and the study of the aqidah of Ahl sunnati wal jama'ah and so as we mentioned in our prior dars uh, we talk we began talking about some of the divine names and attributes that Shaykh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala began mentioning in his treaties that Ahl sunnah to these Shaykh al-Islam mentioned these in order to affirm for us the creed of Ahl sunnah is that Ahl sunnati wal jama'ah takes their creed from the Quran and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and that Ahl sunnati wal jama'ah that they understand who Allah is and his divine characteristics and that he has the most beautiful and perfect names and attributes and that they come from the Quran, the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the authentic sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And anything that Allah affirms for himself, Ahlul Sunnah affirms for Allah. And anything that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam affirms for Allah, then Ahlul Sunnah affirms that for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And anything Allah, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala negates for himself, then Ahlul Sunnah negates that. And anything that uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam negates for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Ahl Sunnah negates that attribute for Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. So Shaykh Al Islam he mentioned about the point that Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala is has knowledge over everything. His knowledge is all encompassing. And he uses ayats as is uh, common with the asloob of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah and many of the ulama and especially the Salaf is that they explained and wrote a little but they mainly use adilla from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu and of course athar of the Salaf al-Salih radiyallahu ta'ala majma'in that this was their tariqah, this was their minhaj and their methodology in uh, in uh, proving and, and, and establishing and understand the, the creed in the minhaj of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. Qala Allahu Ta'ala fi kitabi al Kareem, Ya'lumu ma yulaju fil ardi wa ma yakhruju minha wa ma yanzilu min as samai wa ma ya'ruju fiha. Wa qala Ta'ala, wa indahu mafatihu al ghayb. لا يعلم ولا ي لا يعلم هما إلا هو ويعلم ما في البر بر والبحر وما تسقط من الورقة إلا يعلم يعلمها ولا حبة في ظلمات الأرض ولا رتب ولا ي ولا يابس إلا في كتاب مبين وقال تعالى وَمَا تَحْمِلُوا مِنْ مِنْ أُنْثَى وَلَا تَدَعُوا إِلَّا بِعِلْمِهِ وقال تعالى لِتَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٌ وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ قَدْ أَحَاطَ بِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ عِلْمًا وَقَوْلُهُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الرَّزَّاقُ ذُو الْقُوَّةِ الْمَتِينِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in these verses, He says in the first ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He knows that which goes into the earth, and that which comes forth from it, and that which descends from the heaven, and that which ascends uh, to it, or from it. And in the second verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, And with Him are the keys of the ghayb, meaning all that is hidden. None knows them but He. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affirms that He knows the ghayb, 
Alam al ghaybi wa shahada. Allah knows the ghayb, but His creatures don't know the ghayb. They don't know the unseen, except what Allah gives that little bit of knowledge to some of His creatures, like His Anbiya gives them some knowledge, but they don't know the full knowledge of the ghayb. None knows them but He, and He knows whatever there is in or on the earth and in the sea. Not a leaf falls, but He knows it. There is not a grain in the darkness of the earth, nor anything fresh or dry, but is written in a clear record. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And no female conceives or gives birth, but with knowledge. And Allah Taala says that you may know that Allah has power over all things and that Allah surrounds all things in his knowledge. He comprehends everything in his knowledge. And Allah Taala says, Verily Allah is the all provider, owner of power, the most strong. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affirms for himself in all of those verses uh, various uh, uh, sifat that he possesses subhana. But the shahid here as Sheikh Salah bin Fozan mentions from the from the first verse, the, the Sheikh says that the, the point here is this this affirms the knowledge of Allah the Almighty and that it encompasses everything. And that also in that same verse, that whoever, as, as we mentioned, that whoever claims that they have knowledge of the unseen, then they have disbelieved. So for example, those fortune tellers, those people, those soothsayers, witches, uh, various forms of paganism which claim to, you know, palm readers and all these other ones, they are disbelievers. They have claimed knowledge of the unseen which they do not possess. And the little bit of knowledge that they may perhaps sometimes get correct comes from the devils. It comes from the shayateen. It comes from the devils and the jinn. So some of these people, they have a relationship with the jinn. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has full knowledge over er of, of everything. His knowledge encompasses everything, subhana. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows uh, when... He knows what a woman contains in her womb and when she's going to give birth, how she's going to give birth. Uh, is the child healthy or not? Is it a, a male or a female? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala possesses all of this knowledge. The second ayat, Shaykh Salah bin Fuzan, Hafid Allah Ta'ala mentioned, he said that the point of this ayat is that it affirms that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that no one, it affirms that Allah has knowledge of the unseen and that no one has this knowledge except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that his, his knowledge encompasses all things. So this is similar to the same one. And it also in this verse, it affirms Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his power, his omnipotence and that he has written the qadr in Allah al-Mahfuz that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written the decree for everything that would happen when a woman will give birth when the ending the when the beginning of creation the ending of creation when uh, the day of judgment will, will come upon us all of these things are known to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they were all written in the divine decree of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala and then in the uh, other verse Shaykh Salim bin Fawzan Hafidh Allah Ta'ala mentions that the main point of that verse is that also it affirms the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he, his knowledge encompasses everything and it affirms his power, his omnipotence over everything. So all of those verses, they uh, uh, affirm basically the same thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, his, his qadr, his his divine decree, his power, his omnipotence, and his all-encompassing knowledge. In the last verse, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna Allahu razzaq, that Allah is the sustainer or the provider, that this verse, Shaykh Salah bin Fawzan, Hafidh Allah ta'ala says, that it, is, it affirms that Ar-Razzaq is one of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's uh, Asma al-Husna, uh, one of his perfect and beautiful names. And it is also the uh, an affirmation of his complete power, his perfect power, and his his sustain his um, his ability 
to sustain and provide for his, cre his creation and his creatures. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has no weaknesses, no shortcomings, and no, uh, he doesn't become tired in, in uh, doing those, uh, in, in, in fulfilling those, uh, those deeds, meaning fulfilling the provisions of the creation and providing for us. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the quwwat al mateen he has the full quwwah, the full power. He is all powerful, almighty, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the Shaykh, Shaykh, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he mentioned in the next bab, affirming for us, Ithbat as sam'i wal basr lillahi subhanahu That he affirms for us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affirms for himself his uh, hearing and his seeing. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Shaykh uh, al-Qala Shaykh al-Islam wa qawluhu ta'ala laysa kamithlihi shay wa huwa samiya al-basir wa qawluhu inna allaha ni'amil ni'amin yu'idhukum bi inna allaha kana samiyan samiyan basira So in those two verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affirms for himself that he possesses hearing and seeing and that his hearing and seeing is perfect and complete. This affirms that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hears and sees and that he also has irada, that he has intention. So in the first verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٌ وَهُوَ سَمِيعُ الْبَصِيرُ That there is none like unto him. And he is the all hearer, the all seer. And in the second verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Verily, how excellent is the teaching which he gives you, meaning Allah. Truly, Allah is ever all hearer, all seer. seer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again affirms for himself that he sees everything and he hears everything. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, It was better for you to say when you entered your garden, that which Allah wills will come to pass. There is no power but with Allah. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says uh, in the last verse, If Allah had willed, they would not have fought against one another. But Allah does what He likes. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affirms for Himself, Irada, or that he he um, he does what he 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 pleases, Subhanahu wa Taala. So this is irada. Allah affirms for Himself that He has intention and irada. You know that He has the that He He that He has intention and He wants to do things and He fulfills whatever He intends. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has full, is perfect in his hearing and perfect in his seeing. And we've talked about those attributes before. And those are the main important uh, points of those uh, verses in that section of the book. Is that Allah affirms for himself that he is all uh, hearing and all seeing. So that he possesses hearing and he possesses seeing. He possesses those characteristics. And that his characteristics are not like his creatures. His attributes are not like his creatures. Because his creatures, those things which are created like us as hum humankind or animals, we possess hearing and seeing as well. But ours is nux. Ours is, is, uh, has shortcomings. That we are limited in our hearing. We're limited in our sight. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He sees everything. And He hears everything subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Shaykh al-Islam, rahimahullah ta'ala, He mentions, Ithbat al-Mashiya wal-Iradata wal-Irada lillahi subhanahu. That He affirms that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he he uh, that he has intention and that he has a will. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a divine will and divine intention. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitabihi al-karim wa qawluhu wa law la idh dakhalta jannataka kulta ma sha Allah la quwwata illa billah. 
وقال وقوله تعالى ولو شاء الله ما ما اقتل ما اقتل ما اق ما اقتلت اقتلت ولكن الله يفعل ما يريد وقوله تعالى أحلت لكم بهيمة الأنعام إلا ما يطلع عليكم غير محل الصيد وأنتم حرم إن الله يحكم ما يريد So in those uh, three ayats, those three verses in the Quran, Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala says and affirms for himself that he has arada, that he has intention, and that he has uh, he has a will, subhanahu wa taala. And those were uh, we we've mentioned the translations of those verses already, where Allah Tabarak wa Taala says uh, that. Verily, how excellent is the teaching of Allah which He has gives you. Truly, Allah is ever all hearer, all seer. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, It was better for you to say when you entered your garden that which Allah wills will come to pass. There is no power but with Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, If Allah had willed, they would not have fought against one another, but Allah does what He likes. So again, this affirms arada. It affirms in, uh, intention. And it, infirm, uh, and it affirms that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He has a divine will But His will is not like our will Our will may or may not be fulfilled Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala His will is fulfilled Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is perfect In His divine attributes Subhanahu wa ta'ala And a point worth mentioning Here Is it opens up the opportunity for us to mention uh, The two types of arada That arada or this divine will that we're talking about is of two types. There is arada shariya wa arada koniya. Arada shariya. This refers to the will which is in accordance with the Sharia. These are the things that Allah loves and is pleased with. So arada shariya are those things which Allah loves and is pleased with. For example, Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala is pleased with what? In His divine will, He's, he's pleased with uh, belief, Iman. He is pleased with the muttaqin, those people who have taqwa. Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala is pleased with the sabirin. In Allah, Yuhibbu sabirin. Allah loves those people who are patient. Allah loves the mutatahirin. Allah loves those people who are pure, the purified ones. So all of those things, those are in accordance with irada shari'ah. Then we have the other type of irada or will of Allah, irada koniya. Irada koniya. Irada koniya. This refers to the will of Allah subhanahu wa taala, which has to do. With those things Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed and willed. However, those things may entail some things that Allah does not love and is pleased with. Allah willed it. Allah decreed it and made it happen. But those aren't the things that He, he loves. For example, Allah gives us the choice. He allows for people to disbelieve. There are people who believe and disbelieve. The fact that some people disbelieve in Allah... Some people curse Allah. Some people hate the believers. That is in accordance with arada koniya. It will happen. Allah decreed it to happen, but He does not. He is not pleased with that. He, that those are not things that Allah loves. But the fact that someone chooses iman, chooses belief, chooses Islam, then Allah loves that. That's in accordance with irada sharia. So that's the distinguishment. That, that's how we distinguish between arada sharia or arada koniya. Arada sharia has to do with those things Allah loves. Arada koniya has to do with those things that Allah subhanahu wa taala uh, decreed, but He does not love. But they have to happen. For sure they will happen. I hope that's clear bi idnillah ta'ala. And then, 
Sheikh Saleh bin Fawzan, Hafid Allah Ta'ala mentions about this. He mentions that these uh, verses here, that they affirm for us that Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala has His Mashiach, that He has a will, a divine will. They, def they also affirm for us His Quwa, His Might, and that He is the Almighty, and His uh, Hikam, that Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala has divine wisdom, is the all wise and his irada that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a divine will and and that these are sifat sifat uh, lillah ta'ala ala ma yulik bi jalalihi that's a beautiful statement by Sheikh Salim bin Fawzan hafidh Allah ta'ala he said that those characteristics those divine characteristics or those divine attributes that they are attributes which belong to Allah to baraka wa ta'ala in a manner that suits his majesty. And that's why we don't we aren't like those people who ask the cave how. We don't know how. But they are in a manner that suits uh, uh, the majesty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That he knows subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those are his divine attributes. And the how is unknown to us. But we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has those attributes and we affirm them because Allah said that about Himself in the Qur'an. We don't need to doubt that. Allah affirmed it for Himself, so we affirm it. The Prophet sallallahu affirmed it, so we affirm it. Sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. And I ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. And I think we'll stop there. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.